I dodged death many a time, and that night in Abilene was no different. I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob and collecting the bounty on John Wisdom. I thought the Texas Rangers got heart. Yeah, that's what they want you to believe. It was cold in a witch's tit and a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres to the very same saloon we're sitting in today. Look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me and... I'm jumping the gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? John Wesley Hardin was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. Fathers and husbands, brothers and sons, men with families who cared about them. Families who put up money in hopes of finding justice. He was a bona fide folk hero by then, and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping Bob was among them. Shit, it's cold out here. I'm freezing my giblets off. Ain't right, we gotta stay out here keeping watch like this. Ain't nobody stupid enough to go after Hardin anyway. Better three hours early than a minute too late. They didn't ask why I was there. They knew. I had to spill a lot of blood to find out Hardin wasn't in that camp. He was carousing in town with his closest friends. Hardin's boys apparently didn't want me to reach the bull's head. Some were hightailing it into town to inform their F.A. of my unwelcome presence. was among them. I steeled myself for the fight ahead. For as good as I was, deep down I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Before I could test my mettle against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption, but John Wesley might have been a different story. I didn't learn until later that that night was, in fact, his birthday celebration.
I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. certain hostility. disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. I felt a bolt of adrenaline, or maybe that was fear. He was well known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. than grease lightning, but being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? Thank you, darling. Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, did you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a red man? Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation. A bounty was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. 
mountains so high they tickle the nether regions of heaven. Grey Wolf was a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony. And the slaughter was unspeakable. I understood his anger, as there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution, and were more than willing to die for him. They saw me before I saw them. my mind that maybe this wasn't such a good idea, but now that the shooting had started, there was no backing down. rugged country, the winter home of the Cherokawas, and that's why they had retreated there. I admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did, but then again, I got a lot of those. But I did find the entrance to their hideout. A deep crevice that led to a deeper cave. Don't tell me you went in there. Yeah, but it's not out of bravery so much as pure, angry cussedness. See, back then, I had a stubborn streak a mile wide, and I wasn't about to back down. So it was like pitch black in there? Actually, it was pretty well lit, as they had torches on the walls. his cave. Big as hell, Ben. Chiricahua had hit out there during the Indian War. They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those murdered by the horse soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts? To be honest, I was more concerned with the live ones than the dead ones.
so much about agents. A few years back, I was married to two Mescalero women. At the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Polygyny is traditional among the Mescalero. So what happened? Oh, I had to get out of there. Those girls never shut up. Both of them nagging at me all the time. Drove me half crazy. Haven't seen them since. No, I mean, what happened with Grey Wolf? Oh, well, I pursued him into the Cave of Death. I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows, and I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart, and if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. As his story unfolded in my mind. You will come to this place again and kill many more men, and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything that you are. The soul will have no rain after I had no tears. He said I was a great warrior. Coyote man, unequaled by any other pale-faced warrior, or something like that. The snakes will bite shadows of your past until a venom closes your heart, and an echo of the song of the dead summons the spirits deep from within the mountains. I didn't quite get what he was saying, but there was definitely snakes. And indeed, his warriors surrounded me and attacked me like hungry wolverines. They couldn't stop me, though, and Grey Wolf wasn't in the mood for idle talk. where I couldn't see any way out of this trap. But suddenly, one just appeared. Kinda like a mirror. I felt like I would be lost in that damn cave forever. Finally, I found myself back outside, perched on the edge of a precipice, overlooking a thundering white water rip. To get where I was going required several leaps of faith. But no way in hell I was turning back. I chased after him, determined to make him explain the meaning of all that mumbo-jumbo. Mumbo-jumbo's right. Are you making this all up as you go? A few details may be fuzzy, brother, but I am relating exactly what happened. There were dozens of Apache warriors aiming at me from our high. Dozens? Well, maybe not dozens, but... There was a lot of them. At least three or four. Well, more than that, little lady. I had a steep climb up creek ahead of me and scrambled up those rocks like a mountain goat. I was determined to locate Grey Wolf and find out exactly what the hell he was trying to tell me. And wouldn't you know it, that crafty son of a bitch led me right into a trap. What kind of trap? Well, son, there had to be at least a hundred Apaches surrounding me. Uh, a hundred? God be my witness. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? Hey, I believe you. Come on, tell us how it ended. All right, but I'm not gonna drag this out. Where were we? You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. Well, I didn't take the time to count them exactly, but there were a lot of
And in the end, a path appeared before me that I had not seen before. I followed it as I desperately needed to find out what Grey Wolf was trying to tell me. But it was like that some of bitch disappeared into thin air. Never did find him. And never did collect my goddamn bounty. Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem, uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of the right? I did my best, sir. We all did. 